أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بار الخلائق أجمعين وبائف الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين باب القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم عداء الله إلى قيام يوم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your deeds during the holy month of Ramadan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq to do more inshallah in the rest of this holy month welcome to the short lessons of tafsir al-mizan Tonight, inshallah, we're going to talk about one of the fundamental subjects of Qur'an according to Tafsir al-Mizan. Inshallah, tonight we begin and we will discuss the verse number 30 of the Surah Al-Baqarah, second chapter of Qur'an. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa idh qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم إن شاء الله we will discuss this verse and the next verses until the verse number thirty five in سورة البقرة brothers and sisters one of the most important subjects in the theology in different philosophies in different religions is the value and the position of the human being. What is the value of human being? What is the conception about the essence of the human being? And in the bottom of this uh, discussion, we have the story of the creation, different narratives about the creation. What happened when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when God, Lord, whatever you call it, you call him, what happened when he created human being? Tonight, inshallah, we focus on two different narratives. First will be from the holy book, the Bible, and the Old Testament. And then, inshallah, we will go to the uh, to uh, Surah Al-Baqarah and the verse number 30 to number 35 to find out what is the different conceptions of the Christianity and Islam regarding the essence and the creation of the human being. You know, different understandings from the reality of the creation of the human being develops different worldviews and even different histories for the mankind. Inshallah, tonight I begin with the uh, narrative of the holy book, the Old, Old Testament, and inshallah I will talk about the outcomes and the consequences of this kind of understanding. In the book of Genesis, in the holy book, in the Bible, you have a very interesting story about the creation of the human being. In that understanding, in that narrative and kind of story, we read this, I read this script of the Bible. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm going to the next verses. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after God created human being, recommended and commanded human being to not get close to that tree okay the famous story of the forbidden tree but out of the, out of the tree of out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat the tree of what the tree of knowledge for in the day that you eat of it you shall die okay now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild enemy wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, so the first person who was deceived and fall for this, you know, deception of shaitan was who? Was the woman, not the man. 
Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or shall you or you shall die. Okay? For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Look at the reasoning. So when the woman saw that the tree, th th this was the, res the response of the serpent. He said, but the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. Because the woman, Havva, told the shaitan, the serpent, that God told us, if we eat from the fruit of that tree, we shall die. Okay. Shaitan said what? No, you will not die. You will gain the power of understanding and distinguishing between what? Good and bad, good and evil. Okay. So when the woman when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that is was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some of some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Okay. Then what happened? Did they die? No, no. They didn't die. What happened? This is the promise of the serpent. What happened? Then the eyes of both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made... In the continue of this verse, talks about the how they covered themselves. Okay? The rest of the verses here. Then the Lord God... This is the interesting point here. Said, see, and we can understand that Allah or God, it's not, this is their conception of God. God is talking to the who? To angels. See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and leave forever. Allah is afraid. God is afraid of, what, of what's happening there. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. Okay. This conception that the forbidden tree was the tree of what? Tree of knowledge. And tree of eternity, tree of life was also there. And God... And God stopped human being from eating from what? The tree of life. Why? Because he was afraid. Because if the human being could reach out to the fruit of the tree of life, he would become like God and angels. So God has sent down human beings to the earth. End of story. Look, this kind of conception about the creation of the human being made too many misunderstandings in the history of the Christianity, especially in Europe, in the West. You know, always knowledge resembles what? Some act of transgression, okay? Especially in the medieval age, this knowledge, this, this thirst to know more, this, this, this kind of, you know, feeling that you need to understand this different sciences, this was condemned by the church in that time. So this contrad contradiction between the religion, between the divine order, between God and what? And knowledge and science and light of knowledge. It always existed in the heart of the Christianity. Why? This has too many reasons. But one of those is this understanding and this narrative of what? Of the creation of the human being. Okay, let's go to Quran. Very short. It's a very long story. Okay, but tonight very short. In the Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of Quran, look how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Quran teaching us what is the reality of the creation of the human being. So how Allah look look how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala begins to talk about the creation of the human being. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة Allah doesn't say I'm going to create human being No Allah says what I'm going Oh the angels Oh the angels I'm going to do what To appoint a wise gerent I'm going to put my representative on earth So the name of this new creature is not just human being, insan, whatever. This is the representative, the wise gerent of who? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the beginning. And what happens then? Angels, they think, and this has a deep inter interpretation, okay? What is the reality behind this question of the angels? This, not, this, is, not an object, this is not an objection. This is a question, okay? They say what? They say, Do you appoint the kind of creature who will make mischief therein and will shed the blood on earth? Why they say that? They say, Oh Allah, you're doing that while we are doing tasbih and tahmid for you. Like we are here. We are eligible. We have the competence. To be what? To be your vice chairman of Allah. While we repeat the remembrance of thanksgiving due to your absolute purity and we celebrate your holiness, they said. So what does that mean? Appoint us as your khalifa. Appoint us as your representative. Appoint us as the vice chairman. What is the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is how he answers. Allah didn't say that they won't shed blood. They won't make atrocities on, on the earth. No. What did he say? He said that I know something that you don't know. And then what happened? This is beautiful. Then what happened? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in that stage is going to prove that the human being, human being, and that in that time, Adam is the manifestation of the human being. And inshallah, if we had time, I will talk about the reality of human being here. Is, is it just Adam or all the reality of the human being? Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا And he taught Adam the names. Here, Allah Matabatabai makes beautiful points. First of all, that position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give Adam, to give human being, is what? Is the highest level of the creation. To be the vice gerent, the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, that position is a, a spiritual position, is not a material position. This is why angels understood that and they claimed that position by saying what? By saying that we are the best creatures in the universe to do hamd and to do tasbih for you, O oh Allah. We know what is your hamd, hamd and your tasbih. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them that there is a new creature here above even the angels. It's the most eligible creation, the most competent creation. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names. Allah Taala says, these names are not our names. Muhammad, Ali, Hassan, John, Sarah, other names, okay? These are the realities of this world. The realities of this universe. So, every name, every esm, every esm represents what? Represents the whole reality of a part or a portion of this universe. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the Adam all the names, what does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him the absolute knowledge. Knowledge of everything. Look at the contradiction. In that narrative, the tree of knowledge was forbidden. Okay? And if Adam is approaching to the tree of knowledge, he's going to be damned. He's going to the be... Uh, Fired from what? From the paradise, okay? And sent down to the earth. But the, in the narrative of Quran, 
Adam was created and became the representative, the vice chair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of what? Because he was eligible, he was competent, he had this power to carry the burden of the all names of this existence. So Allah gives him the whole knowledge. This is the value of human being in Islam. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ Beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Adam all the names. Then presented them to who? To the angels. Okay, oh angels, these are the names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these names are real creatures with life in the uh, presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why? For those who know Arabic, I'm not going to go in, in, in the literature, okay? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَرَضَهُمْ This home, this kind of, uh, in, in Arabic we call it ضَمِير It refers to who? To the persons who has, to the persons who have aql, intellect. They have the sense and intellect. Not just stones and ordinary names and the skies or earth, no. There are some real creatures in this universe. And what are those things? We're not going to talk about that. Just to know they are the realities of this world. They are the ilm and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented these names to the angels and said what? فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ Beautiful verses of Quran here. Then presented them to the angels and said, Okay, tell me the names of this. Describe for me, okay? Give me some definitions. What are those names? What was the response of the angels? They had nothing. They said what? In Quantum Sadiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, If you are really truthful, if you really think that you are eligible to be appointed as my representative, as my vice chair, okay, what are those names? قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَ the angels said, what? Immaculate are you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. We don't know what are those names. We cannot figure out what is the reality of those names. Okay? You are the all-knowing. You are the all-wise. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proves the, what? The competence of the human being. قَالَ يَا آدَمْ Now, this is the stage of the creation. قَالَ يَا آدَمْ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ He said, O oh, oh, Adam, inform them of the reality of those names. فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ And when he had informed them of their names, this is the end of the story. So the angels realized what? That Adam is above them. That Adam, human being, is superior to them. That they are not the best creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that they had not the highest levels of spirituality and existence in this universe. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Did I not tell you that I indeed know the unseen in the heavens and the earth? And here Allah Taala says what? He says, this ghayb as-samawati wal-arth was, was what? Was this position of the human being. This is ghayb as-samawati wal-arth. Ghayb as-samawati wal-arth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels that this, is what, this was the unseen of the universe. Even you, the angels, could not see that. Even you could not figure out what is the reality of the human being. You thought that this kind of creature is, is just going on the earth to shed the blood, to make atrocities, to make wars, to make disagreements. No, this is not the reality of human being. The reality of human being is غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything behind this visible skies and the earth. So, after that what happens? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ 
And when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إبليس. They prostrated all of them, but not Iblis. He refused, أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And acted arrogantly, and he was one of the what? Faithless. Okay? So, different narratives, different conceptions about the human being. Brothers and sisters, this kind of human being is eligible to carry all the realities and all the knowledge of this universe. This human race can reach highest levels of spirituality, highest levels of existence. This material life is the lowest level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared us to do what? To reach to that peak of the, un of the existence. To peak of the existence. And what is that peak? Inshallah, in one session, I will talk about that. About the peak of the existence. Okay. So if we are Muslims, if we are Muslims, we don't need to seek, you know, so-called humanism, what happened in the modern age in the West, to give back humanity his values, to give him back all the, uh, you know, his dignity. No, in Islam... Human being was created because he was the most knowledgeable person, the most knowledgeable creature, because he had the most uh, eligibility to gain everything in this universe. And those asma is everything in this universe. Okay? So this makes another civilization, another society. If you look at human beings, your Muslim brothers and sisters like that, even non-Muslims, even they have this competence. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about who? About the human beings. Not about just the Muslims and Shia people. No. All of them has this potential, has this eligibility. Yes. How many of people can disclose that, can discover that? We don't know. But this is the reality of human being. And this is why we say that this 70 years on, on, on the earth, 80 years, 90 years, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, this is not the end of the story. We're going to witness everything in this universe. And it begins with the dunya. Dunya is the beginning of everything. By acting good deeds here, by purifying yourself, and by abiding by the, lies, by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can take those steps and reach the highest levels of spirituality. Again, what is the highest level of spirituality? Insha'Allah, we will talk about that according to Allah Tabatabain Al Mizan in the following sessions. Thank you very much for listening to me. Insha'Allah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this ma'rifah. Of Quran, this is Quran, just five verses, and I just you know neglected too many contents here. I didn't talk about many things in these five verses, just for the for our short time. Five verses full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of insight in Surah Al Baqarah, let alone the whole Quran. Insha'Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this tawfiq to reflect more on the Holy Qur'an. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi al